All right, let's end the BIOS debate once and for all. I'm going to show you proof that anyone who's shouting, oh, 319 is slower, they don't know what they're doing. What I like to run when I check benchmarks and when I check drivers to see if something has changed to affect performance, I like to run a few different things. First of all, I like to run repeatable tests like Cinebench that'll tell me my CPU score. Then I like to use 3D Mark Time Spy because it tests the CPU and the GPU. I also like to run a repeatable benchmark like the built-in benchmark utility on Modern Warfare. I don't get in a game. I don't play a game to see what my FPS is because that's never ever going to be the exact same result over and over. It's not a repeatable, reliable benchmark to actually run around in a game and expect the same results, especially if you're on the internet. One thing to notate too is when you boot your computer, it's running a lot of other things in the background. I didn't choose to run any of these. These are just services that are associated with the drivers or the hardware and so on. I've tuned mine down so I've got about half the RAM usage as most people. So that's a lot less variables to take up RAM and to slow my system down randomly, trying to do an update or something. So make sure that you have all the variables taken away first. Make sure before you run a benchmark that your system is not using CPU or um, memory usage that can affect your benchmark. Well, here's the meat and potatoes. It speaks for itself. I can show you um, screenshots if you want, comment, I'll drop them in the Discord, whatever you need. I, I don't care. I've got video after video of me running them too. So here we go. Benchmark on Cinebench, it is 15,364. On 317, it's about 30 points lower. Now, on Time Spy, we notice an even bigger jump. We've got about a 230 point difference overall. Now, if you look at Modern Warfare, there's only about a 2 FPS difference. So when it comes to games, you're only going to notice about a 1 to 2 FPS difference between runs, whereas something like Time Spy, you might notice a, um, a little bit more jump than that. This is an average between 3 runs. This is also an average between 3 runs. So I don't run just one test. I run it 3 times at the exact same everything, the same settings, I just I try to make sure they're repeatable and they're reliable scores. So anyone who's talking about 319 being slower, I've watched their videos. Most of them, generally, there's a few variables there. There's a few things that could be going on in the background, and most of them are not running repeatable benchmarks. They're actually just telling you the FPS, or they're cherry-picking a specific scene in the game, or they're running around and trying to act like that's the FPS. It is what it is. There's a lot of Asus haters. There's a lot of Steam Deck simps out there who are literally just crapping on this device for no reason and trying to nitpick it as best as they can. I don't trust a lot of major YouTubers only for the simple fact that if they're not showing a lot of the data and they're not getting rid of the variables, it's not a repeatable result and it's probably not accurate. People like Gamers Nexus are who inspire me. I like his results. I like the information that he gives because he breaks it down a lot more and he kind of gets rid of all the variables that could affect the benchmarks. And overall, this is my experience. Your experience may vary simply for the factors stated earlier. If you have any questions, if you want to know how I tune my systems, let me know. I'll link a video below helping you. Um, I'm here to help the community grow. I'm here to educate people and to kind of share what's possible with this device. It's a very good and very capable device. I'm able to achieve about 100 FPS on average online in Modern Warfare. The benchmark's a little bit more stressful. Um, games like Forza as well, it, it just it runs really, really smooth. I can run at 1080p with FSR on quality. I don't have to sacrifice down to 720p, 60 FPS. I, I, can, I can just crank that bad boy up. It's very, very smooth. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm here to help. Um, I love this handheld. It's a great device. Hopefully others will kind of come around and start kind of tinkering with this a little bit more on the software level and we'll get this ball rolling. Uh, we really need a better OS, in my opinion, that's more um, specifically curtailed to this device because there's a lot of stuff that when you turn on the handheld for the first time, you'll see TikToks installed, you'll see Netflix is installed. There's a whole lot of Office and just junk apps that are taking up memory and space in the background. 
And last thing I'll notate, um, the memory card thing, you guys gotta stop using these. These things get extremely hot. They don't last. If you're downloading a game, you're bottlenecked to your memory card speed. So I actually tried um, running, I, I've actually got a 400 gig uh, memory card over here somewhere. I'm not, I, I think I probably dropped it. Oh, here it is. It's in my system. This is my 400 or my 200? Let's see. That's my 400. So yeah, I've actually ran this in this device. I tried downloading Modern Warfare, I tried downloading Forza, I tried downloading tons of games, but it generally takes hours and hours and hours to download on this thing, even with the drivers reinstalled and all that good stuff. And it gets extremely hot. But guess what? It also does that on the Steam Deck. It's an issue with the memory card's capability, guys. These things are very small. There's not a lot of cooling in this device for your memory card. So you're gonna be bottlenecked by this thing. It doesn't matter how much you spend on it. They're all junk. I've tried them all. It's just not worth it. Just go get an NVMe drive, upgrade it, and call it a day. You're, you're, you're gonna be sacrificing a lot, and you're gonna be waiting a lot, and you're gonna be having a lot of issues. These are not without their issues. However, who these are for are for people who need to save smaller games, who need to save ROMs, who need to save stuff that is not over five gigs, basically. If it's over five gigs, that really eats into the cache, and it just most of these don't have any to begin with, so they just run dog crap slow, and they get hot, and heat produces failure. So anyone who's had any of these failed, you know who you are. I, I tried to warn you in the discords. I, I'm all over the, the ROG ally I support. I'm always trying to help people. This is not the way. This is the way though. 319 is the way. I'm about to upgrade back. I saved my uh, BIOS here. I did a short earlier showing you how to get into the BIOS. You need to make sure it's plugged in, hold the power, uh, make sure it's off, plugged in, hold the volume down, hold the power up until you feel it vibrate, let go of the power while you're holding the down button, go into the BIOS, hit Y to go to the advanced menu, Go to the Easy Flash utility. Make sure you have a memory card in there. Um, I tried using this, that's right, it didn't work. So it has to be plugged in. So I put it on memory card, plugged it in, upgraded, downgraded. I've done it both ways. It doesn't make a difference. 319 is the way, in my opinion. I got better performance. Anyone who's saying differently, they could be uh, running into a couple of things also. Could also be thermal throttling. I run a manual fan curve. I have mine in 30 watt manual with a fan curve. I notice a lot of people thermal throttling. That could be an issue as well. I don't know. I get rid of all the variables. I run the exact same test over and over and over with the same exact tune. I'm not overclocked. I'm not running under volting. I'm, I'm not doing anything. If I do want to do any of that, well, my results will be a lot better and I can share those with you. But for normie reviews and my, my YouTube content here, what I'm trying to tell you, everything is running stock. So I hope this helps somebody. If you have any comments, drop them below. Let me know what your experience is and maybe we can all try to work this out together. All right, well, until next time, I hope you all have a good afternoon, good evening, and good night.